Hey guys, welcome back to another review. In this video, we're going to be looking at a Vietnam War era um, bayonet. This is a US M7 bayonet for the M16 rifle. You could put it on a shotgun, but it mainly goes on a M16. So the reason we're going to look at this particular bayonet right now is because the last video I did was of the Vietnam automatic survival uh, parachute or pilot's knife. So I figured I'll keep up with that theme of Vietnam. <clears throat> so that's why we're looking at this bayonet. I did this review about I'm gonna say eight or nine years ago but nobody was really interested in it um, and there was hardly any uh, reviews on this particular bayonet but now <laughs> I mean these uh, videos for this particular bayonet and others are all over YouTube some have so much information already that there's really not much to really talk about for me at least <clears throat> so we're going to get uh, through this video quick and in a hurry <laughs> so for the most part this is a very very cool uh, bayonet now you can see right here it's PWH USM8A1 uh, most people they see that the M8A1 and they call this bayonet the M8 but it's actually not it's just a sheath and the bayonet itself is an M7 so this one has the number 39 as you can <laughs> obviously clearly see this one is not all rusted up like others that I have seen in the past that I mean people oh my god they love the patina and they love the the rust look and all that stuff and everybody has their own opinion mine though this is 1964 to present day this particular one is Vietnam era uh, somewhere from 1964 to 1973 around there and uh, how can you tell? Well, this one has the BOC guard on it. The stamping, I mean. I'll show you that in a minute. And uh, this are, or these are razor sharp. Now, you can get some that are in really rough shape. Um, let's say, uh, beat to hell, basically. Okay? So, again, uh, rust it up beat to hell uh, the blade is all nicked up and all this this one is if not in very good condition to excellent condition um, yes I know excellent condition you know the brass here and this over here are painted and all this stuff and but again Vietnam era this has been in war and brought back and been in storage I bought this from a collector and uh, he was letting a few go and uh, again I bought this at the gun show for twenty dollars so again that is freaking awesome uh, do I like these hell yes I love them I love these bayonets um, do I have any more of these M7's no I do not this is the only M7 bayonet I have and uh, for the most part I really really like this bayonet very cool um, let's see what else um, again three million of these were made they I mean damn <laughs> a lot of these were made by a lot of different countries around the world a lot of different uh, manufacturers a lot of companies uh, the, the best one that I want to get my hands on is Colt the second one is Imperial then you have this one here that's BOC and uh, several others that you know again there's just so many companies that I didn't have a list of all of all of them <laughs> so 
uh, very cool you can see that this one here got hit or striked or something sat on it uh, and it broke part of the plastic off and you can see the fibers on the inside so there you go this one does have a metal reinforcement right there at the bottom there some of them don't have that this one does and uh, I put this on 550 cord green you know not not a big deal I could take this off easy um, but there you go now uh, the other thing is you want to see how sharp it is now most bayonets <coughs> most bayonets were never sharp or at least they were not meant meant to be sharp they were meant to stab that's what a bayonet is designed for to stab to thrust and that's it but these you know these are utility bayonets basically so for the most part these are razor sharp <laughs> enough said you can really do some damage with this and um, for the most part again very cool collectible uh, again Vietnam era um, great great price at 20 bucks that I got it for and will I get more hell yes I will will I get them for twenty dollars I doubt it <laughs> I doubt it very much the prices on these are going up the last ones that I, I have seen uh, on eBay I've seen them for about anywhere from seventy five to hundred and fifty dollars and those are like I'm telling you the Imperial and the Colts so anyway um, now that you already saw basically everything that you could see on the scabbard here the canvas the webbing there's your hanger there very nice condition let's look over here the stakings you can see where they hammered it okay let's take it out and see how sharp it is now again beautiful badass knife man or bayonet I keep calling it a knife because well I'm just so used to calling you know blades knives so this is a bayonet you can see right there the bayonet blade now the phosphate if I am mistaken or not uh, the finish on that is coming off which I do not mind at all it's just I mean hey Vietnam era come on <laughs> it could have been used well used actually um, who knows if it was used by the purpose that it was made for or if it was uh, cutting cans or uh, like opening cans or boxes or whatever the case may be um, there you go so let's um, look at the markings on the blade here or on the handguard I should say so there you go USM7 BOC okay now again these bayonets came out in 1964 to present day the ones that still use this type of bayonet are the Marines and uh, from what I understand they're the only military that uses or still has the bayonet now I could be wrong on that so don't quote me on that but uh, that's what I hear so I don't know if it's true or not but there you go so anyway yeah very very cool love that USM7 BOC okay so uh, for the most part a lot of guys at the flea market not a lot a lot but several men that I know of um, they do sell these but they are rusted to hell I don't know why the f why the hell they do that I mean yes I understand it's Vietnam era yeah I understand that it's a collectible it's an antique 
but uh, don't let it go to waste, people. I mean, sh sh seriously, <laughs> shit. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you can still see the staking there. I'm trying to get a good view of it, the good shine, so you can see that. Okay. Now, from what I understand, this one here, the PWH, uh, I believe either that one or the the company over here, the BOC, uh, the company that made either the this or the bayonet itself, are blind people. So the government uh, issued work for them and they in turn made this so that's pretty cool as a historical footnote it's just cool to talk about like hey yeah yeah these these were made by blind people not saying you know anything bad about it they needed work they made government issue bayonets that's badass in my opinion freaking awesome so let's now look at how sharp this baby is and again most of the time bayonets were never designed to be razor blades this one sure as hell is okay let's look at this side the top part let's get another paper Don't look at the camera when you're cutting. <laughs> I have a habit of doing that because I want to make sure that you guys can see that uh, what's going on. I don't want to be like way ass up here and then cutting and then you're like, I can't see it. So again, that is the top part here. And yes, that too is a razor blade. So again, this is not a toy, this is not a replica, this is the real Vietnam issue, bayonet. Very cool. Uh, I could honestly see Rambo using this. Um, of course, I mean, he uses his own uh, survival knife, and that's even badass. Uh, but, honestly, I mean, shit, man, these are amazing. And again, that's why I love this bayonet because it's razor sharp. And again, the history behind who made it and why and all this, I mean, that is badass. Okay, you can see right there. that one there just to finish it off now you can see probably that uh, I do have the blade oiled and uh, again I just don't want it to rust it's a carbon steel I believe it's 1095 carbon steel so it will rust on you if you don't take care of it but uh, I, again, always put oil on my blades so that, again, it will prevent corrosion, rust. So, freaking awesome. So, let's try this again. I'm going to try and get it. I mean, you can just see that. I mean, damn. <laughs> let's do it on this side, too. Trying to get a good view here good cutting edge this way I don't cut my fingers as well <laughs> trying to prevent from cutting my fingers so anyway you guys can see how freaking sharp this blade is it is beautiful it's again a piece of history in both accords on who made it why it was made and who used it and all this bunch of stuff, I mean, seriously, just badass. So, again, very good, or 
let's see what is it good to very good condition there's no pitting there's no heavy rust to it um, you might have a little brown spot here or there but nothing major and that's about it guys I mean I'll put a vid uh, what is it a link in the description in case you want to learn more about this three million of these were made and most of those either are back here in the US or stayed overseas and uh, who knows if they're still around or if they're you know rusted up eaten away uh, or who's using them the pirates and all that other stuff you know but uh, very very sharp again 1095 steel high carbon uh, even if you do have one or find one at the flea market beat the hell and again it's all dull you can sharpen it to this point here or a little bit maybe a little bit sharper uh, here is a cutting test I did earlier before this video because the other video was a way too long and I don't know if you guys can see this or not but uh, same blade um, cut right into the paper shaved the paper in right in the middle of the paper right here so I mean I'm trying to do I'm trying to recreate that but it, I'm having a hard time right now but um, yeah that was that was freaking awesome right there but uh, let me try a little bit more just to see if it will recreate that cutting that it did before and again I gotta watch my fingers here mm, almost let's try another one well if this doesn't show it I don't know what will <laughs> okay so that was the first one that you guys saw and there you go it shaved the paper in two and I was afraid that it was going to cut my finger, so I kind of backed off. But uh, there you go. I mean, really. <laughs> All right, guys. 17 minutes. Holy shit. I did not know or I did not realize it was going to be that long. Um, anyway, guys, that's about it. I hope you liked this uh, episode of Vietnam Edged Weapons. And we're going to talk about the end of World War II and or Korean War. Look at this bayonet. So this is the next um, the next episode here. Why does this one look different? This is an M4 bayonet. Beautiful condition. Alright guys, that's enough. Talk to you later. Bye.